Hi, welcome to chapter 1 of the second SARS tutorial. This tutorial deals with site recording. In this chapter we'll have an introduction to site recording and the organic groups content module. In the previous tutorial we dealt with case management where organic groups weren't involved, but for site recording we often need to secure certain uh, fields and even the whole nodes uh, for archaeological sites or uh, museum collections where we'd like to manage a particular collection uh, without giving the records out in the public domain until we, we're ready to, to release certain fields. Um, this works well for the site, loca the, the site locations within a museum for the objects uh, or the GPS coordinates of sensitive sites uh, don't need to be made public. Um, whereas other certain layers of those uh, content types uh, can be shared with others. The organic groups module is also very useful in that it allows subgroups on SARS without giving away administrative rights to the subgroups. So for instance uh, we might have a recording group logging say 600-700 archaeological sites and within that you can allow the subgroups to create further subgroups where they might invite property owners within their content uh, content group to have rights to view the sites within properties for instance. Um, this is all done without the in need for intervention from a site administrator. So let's move on to a site recording. First thing is uh, to log in and site recorders will be taken to the home page and the SARS link uh, is the first place to go to and under this the menu options for your SARS uh, site generation and exploration of your group content types appear. The first thing I do is I check whether I'm entering a duplicate site and I simply go to explore my content, my group content and this gives me a listing of previous sites this case where um, other members of my group have created content. Um, I could filter for instance uh, by sites starting with GR and I could have all and this gives me the full listing and we can sort by the various columns so perhaps we want to sort by the date that they were last updated. Uh, perhaps the I'd like to look at all the content in my group um, and then filter out, say, the um, first um, 10, and I'd like to view 20 at a time. So the offset excludes these records starting from that number. So uh, let's take, we want to review from 50 onwards. We know there's 61 records at the top. So let's go on there. And so now I've eliminated those first 50, and I'm only viewing 1 to 21. Okay, so it's quite inter quite useful to, to find the sites that you need to look for. Uh, let's choose all again and let's go back to the GRs because we are going to enter a GR 40, 43 or 44 as, a, as an example. So let's filter by GRs and take the offset off and apply, sort by the column. Okay, and you notice various site recorders have been entering with and without spaces, so these need to be edited. It's preferable to enter the, the unique codes without a space between them. Uh, so 42 is the last one in that sequence there, so GR43 uh, will work as an example today. Okay, let's go to creating the site. So create sites, and you need to know that a site must exist before you can record it. Um, the site recordings is a one-to-many relationship to sites. So you might have 10, 20 site recordings over, over the years for a particular site, but you need to start with the very basic site first. Let's click on Sites. Okay, and for Intrasec, it's GR43, and that is Hrtrafeed43. Other recording groups will use different site reference coding systems for their sites and that's fine the system will handle anyone uh, that you want you would like to use and there's a unique site ID uh, behind the uh, behind these nodes 
um, and in addition to that there's a, a, a unique node ID so all of these um, unique numbers can be used to find the site and it doesn't really matter if there's a duplicate site number in the database because the GPS coordinate will separate it, it, separate it out from the, the other one um, let's move on to site category um, and we could choose one or, or as many of these fields as we like so in this case we'll choose rock art and deposit and artifacts so let's choose those and deposit okay then the location name you'll notice there's a, a border around this block here um, location is it's a particular module in uh, Drupal uh, which allows you to geocode uh, street addresses so all of these fields would allow you for instance to map the Castle of Good Hope which is a well-known building uh, in Cape Town if I simply entered the Castle of Good Hope in the location name in Western Cape um, and saved this node it would find the, the castle this is not particularly useful for archaeological sites of course because they don't have street addresses in most instances um, so all we'll do here is enter the province um, and we'll enter the latitude longitude directly in here um, I'm going to create a fake coordinate for, for this particular tutorial so I won't enter the lat long directly in another way in is to simply browse the map zoom in on the left there and let's put the site somewhere near Cape Point in fact let's put it on Cape Point okay um, right, so simply click on the map and there we go so that's created a latitude longitude for us in decimal degrees format you can't enter anything other than decimal degrees format in these fields it won't, it won't work so you need to convert your coordinates across um, a spreadsheet is available on request um, if you don't know how to convert um, or you can google it on the web and there are various tutorials on um, finding um, ways to convert from latitude and uh, longitude in decimal degrees to degrees minutes seconds or degrees minutes and a fraction of second and the other way around um, in this map there's also the satellite view the map view, the hybrid view, the terrain views so use those as you see fit um, and uh, you can zoom back out again if it is a street address you are trying to map um, let's say uh, 11 main road um, uh, observatory Cape Town then it will f automatically find that address in Google's database as well again this works f well for buildings um, not for um, archaeological sites okay so let's stick to the Cape Point example so let's clear that out and zoom back out go back to our recording okay let's stick with that coordinate and let's move down the properties it's quite important for archaeological sites you generally put the farm names in and the um, owners are linked to the farms um, it might be a, an earth in a, in a town um, so just enter whatever is relevant there this is an auto search field with notice the little circle there so if, as I start typing the property name in um, it will find matches in the database and this list will grow as the use of SARS grows so in the ideal world your property will be listed and you simply move it down the list and select and it will fill in the node ID that's really important is if you don't see a node ID after selecting something you haven't linked it correctly so that's very important to remember if it's a new property it isn't in the list simply go to create properties enter the relevant information in uh, here you can choose various owners or an owner if they don't exist yet in the database create them um, and then once you've hit saved then it will enter that property uh, property name into the database with the node ID you can also click on search and you can find properties via the earth number or street address or farm name and so on and so forth okay and just pick the relevant filters the, ref, uh, the property is site checkbox it's mainly for farms and buildings where the site is defined by the entire property so it's a quick way of specifying uh, 
that uh, the entire earth, for instance, is the site that you're dealing with in question. Uh, archaeological sites in general will only apply to the GPS coordinate, not to the property as such. Um, the reason we're capturing this information is that we are then able to log the property owners and give them rights to all their heritage sites on their properties as part of group content types at a later stage. The reference list, this has been dealt with in the case management side, but it also applies to sites. You can enter a citation um, and maybe, maybe a website link, specify the type and add as many as you need to and the date that you've entered that will be automatically uh, logged onto the system. And then your audience is very important. You, you pick the ones that you're members of. Um, in this case we'll use the ECRAG group and the group defaults. Um, normally people will select private only to group members uh, but there might be cases where uh, certain content types are being made public and open on the system or the, uh, you can use the group defaults if they've been set correctly normally we'll set private. Okay, um, And then revision information is only relevant when you're editing a node much later and you want to specify a reason why you've edited something um, and then by default the nodes are published. Save and add another will create another site in the batch or save will simply save the site and take you on to um, adding a site recording and that's what we will do um, in this case. Let's save. Okay, All right. there's the site that's been created and it's got location info, that's what we mapped. Um, it's group content visibility, it's private and the group is ecrag and um, we've got all the relevant fields that we posted. As you can see it's very minimal, it's the site itself um, doesn't have much information. It's, it's in the site recording that most of the fields that you're familiar with in a site record will appear. Um, we won't deal with gradings or locations in uh, this tutorial. Um, we'll move on to new recording in chapter 2.